Hello and thank you for watching this video. We're going to be covering the unbiblical teaching of Jimmy Evans. Jimmy Evans, to a large degree, is responsible for the whole debacle over at Daystar. Jimmy Evans is claiming that there are four reasons uh, to justify divorce. The Bible only gives two, so we're going to examine the false teaching of Jimmy Evans. Watch. You know, in the previous hour, we talked about how the Lord brought a man into my life, but he had gone through a divorce. Right. And um, immediately in our relationship, I brought uh, Jimmy Evans in, mm -hmm. and so he kind of walked with us through it. But this is what I found out, Tim, is how bad the church treats divorced people. Oh, absolutely correct. And so um, I remember when we introduced my now husband, Dr. Doug Weiss, to our audience, mm -hmm. we were engaged, and mm -hmm. I had to tell the audience. Right. And so I brought Jimmy in, mm -hmm. and he kind of went through... Hey, I went through the process with Joni. Yeah, and um, there was no adultery. Yeah, on either side. Right. He, I remember, but he sat down and he said, "But you know, Joni," he said, "Sitting across from broken people for forty years, and I used to have that narrow view. Well, you can't get a di divorce unless it's adultery." And he said, "But then the Lord began to take him in, into other parts." In the New Testament, it were Paul's writings and also some of the rabbinical uh, teaching in the Old Testament about marriage and divorce. And he said, um, the Lord began to show him that there are actually four A's. Mm -hmm. He said, there's abuse that can be excessive, Correct. dangerous. Yep. There can be addictions. Correct. There can be abandonment. Correct. Which is almost like spiritual adultery. Yep. And then there's adultery. That's correct. And... Um, I remember he said, I I talked to Doug, and I'm not going to get into to the details of what he went through, but Jimmy said Doug had a biblical reason mm -hmm. for being divorced. Mm -hmm. And he said, I went through that. And he said, one of the things I look for is damage. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I see damage, you ask yourself the question, does God want someone to be damaged and to stay in a damaged relationship? And he said, no. Yeah. Okay, so Joni is talking to a guy named Tim Ross. He is a blasphemous false teacher. He's the guy earlier this year, remember, African-American guy with the, uh, the yellow, ridiculous-looking glasses there, and he compared Jesus to a stripper. Remember that? He was talking about in his sermon. I'm not even going to repeat it. It was so vile, his sermon, talking about going into a strip club, and he compared Jesus to a stripper on a pole and just blasphemy. That's Tim Ross, and of course, Joni is fellowshipping with Tim Ross, so no surprise there. But the bigger issue is what she's saying about Jimmy Evans, that Jimmy Evans believes there are four justifications for divorce, abuse, addiction, adultery, and abandonment. Well, the Bible only gives two, Jesus with adultery in Matthew 19, and Paul with abandonment in 1 Corinthians 7. And even there, a lot of Christians would say that remarriage is only permitted when there is adultery, and that's Matthew 19. So we're going to look at what the Bible says, but I want to play that clip again, because there's a few things that stand out. Watch. You know, in the previous hour, we talked about how the Lord brought a man into my life, but he had gone through a divorce. Right. And um, immediately in our relationship, I brought uh, Jimmy Evans in. Mm hmm and so he kind of walked with us through it. But this is what I found out, Tim, is how bad the church treats divorced people. Oh, absolutely correct. Okay, so Joni says, you know, the church, as if the church is one monolithic thing, the church uh, treats divorced people poorly. Now, are there churches that treat divorced people poorly? Sure, yeah, that's true. But our church doesn't. You know, and by the way, there are some people who are divorced and it's not their fault, okay? It would be wrong to treat them poorly. Even if someone is at fault, but it was years ago and they repented of that, then they should be forgiven, right? But if you're actively involved in adultery right now, yeah, Christians typically don't like that, or at least they shouldn't. So, you know, Joni's trying to shift the blame. Oh, well, I'm not doing anything wrong, even though she totally is. It, it's just the church. You know, the church is bad. Does Joni even belong to a church? I don't know. On Sunday morning, where is she? 
Where, who's her pastor? I don't know. Can someone tell me? Leave it in the comments section if you know. Daystar claims to be a church, but we know that that's not legitimate. So anyways, let's continue with the video. And so um, I remember when we introduced my now husband, Dr. Doug Weiss, to our audience, mm -hmm. we were engaged, and mm -hmm. I had to tell the audience. Right. And so I brought Jimmy in, mm -hmm. and he kind of went through, hey, I went through the process with Joni, yeah. and um, there was no adultery yeah. on either side. Right. Okay, so this is key. Jimmy Evans and Joni, they admit there was no adultery on either side. Therefore, uh, Doug Weiss, his divorce was not a biblical divorce. Therefore, Joni and him cannot, he can't get remarried to Joni because his divorce, there was no adultery. But she's going to say, well, you know, j even though that's what Jesus says, she's going to say, well, Jimmy Evans, you know, Jimmy Evans used to believe that way. What way? Well, what Jesus said, Matthew 19, verse 9, I say to you that whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, but whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. There you go. So there wasn't adultery. There was no sexual immorality. Therefore, the remarriage for Weiss and Joni, it is adultery. And by the way, if somebody says, well, you shouldn't be talking about this, um, you would have been one of these people that rebuked John the Baptist for preaching against Herod. Hey, John, mind your own business. No, Daystar is one of the largest you know, Christian ministries in the country. If you have adulterers leading one of the largest Christian ministries in the country, and this is all happening out in the open, and Jimmy Evans is teaching false doctrine, allowing people to you know, commit adultery, and he's trying to sanctify it, it's a pastor's job to call that stuff out. Titus chapter 1, verse 9, it's an elder's job. It's a pastor's job to refute those who contradict and to expose the unfruitful works of darkness, Ephesians 5.11. So the people who say, hey, just, sh you know, let's just sweep all this under the rug and don't talk about it. Yeah, you would like that. You know, the, the Catholic Church, they like sweeping scandals under the rug. You know, wicked people like sweeping things under the rug. But um, this is ongoing and Jimmy Evans, more importantly, Jimmy Evans' doctrine is allowing for this, and he's allowing for it to continue. And that's unacceptable. It needs to be rebuked. So let's continue. He, I remember, but he sat down and he said, but you know, Joni, he said, sitting across from broken people for 40 years, and I used to have that narrow view, well, you can't get a di divorce unless it's adultery. And he said, but then the Lord began to take him in, into other parts. Okay, so this is the real reason why Jimmy Evans compromised. You know, he used to believe like Jesus, but he sat across from all these people for so many years, and he collapsed. He caved in. He told people what they wanted to hear. I mean, that's what she's saying. Now, she's going to go on to say, well, actually... You know, she just gave the real reason, but she's going to go on and say, well, he started reading Paul, and where is Paul teaching that addiction is cause for divorce? Yeah, it's not in the Bible, but let's listen. And I used to have that narrow view, well, you can't get a di divorce unless it's adultery. And he said, but then the Lord began to take him in, into other parts in the New Testament, it were Paul's writings, and also some of the rabbinical uh, teaching in the Old Testament about marriage and divorce. And he said, um, the Lord began to show him that there are actually four A's. So where does Paul teach that abuse is justification for divorce? It's not in the Bible, again, because it's not in the Bible. It's not biblical. Pretty simple to understand. Where does Paul teach that addiction? is a justification for divorce. Nowhere. It's not in the Bible. So imagine this. A guy could get into a car accident. He could break his leg. Okay, he has to have surgery. He gets put on pain medication. He accidentally gets addicted. Now his wife has a reason to divorce him and run off with some other guy. Because, well, Jimmy Evans says so. Yeah, but the Bible doesn't say so. Now, if you want to follow the traditions of men, have at it, because that's what Daystar is doing. They're like the Pharisees. They're just adding to the Word of God, or, you know, their tradition, their man-made doctrines, you know, are trumping God's Word. That's what's happening here. But that's the four just justifications for divorce, uh, addiction, 
abuse, adultery, and abandonment. So adultery and abandonment are actually in the Bible. So let's talk about this. Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, 10 through 15, he says, Now to the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, a wife, is not to depart from her husband. Now again, there's that exception clause in Matthew 19, verse 9. If a man cheats on his wife and she divorces him and gets remarried, she has the right to do that. I still don't think it's what you should do, but it is permitted. That's the terminology you see in Matthew 19. But here, I mean, Paul is saying, don't, don't get a divorce. Don't do it. But if she does depart, if you do leave your spouse, uh, you, you better remain celibate. That's what Paul says. Let her remain unmarried, and that's implied that she would be celibate, or be reconciled to her husband. In 1 Corinthians 7, absolutely does not allow for hooking up with someone else. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. Again, if there's a separation or divorce and someone's been unfaithful, well, then yes, you can move on. But if there's not infidelity, you need to wait around. As long as that spouse is alive, if there's no infidelity, you need to remain celibate and wait and hope and pray for reconciliation. That's the biblical teaching. And then Paul says in verse 12, But to the rest, I, not the Lord, say, and that is... That doesn't mean that this is, well, this is just Paul's opinion and you can disregard it. No, it's in the Bible. It's inspired by the Holy Ghost. He's saying Jesus didn't teach this in his earthly ministry, but I am teaching it and it's in the Bible, so people need to follow it. Paul says, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. So, you know, there are some people who converted to Christianity and then they realize, oh, now I'm married to an unbeliever. What do I do? You stay married. I mean, this is always the advice. If a, Let me just say this. If a pastor, if you know of a pastor who is encouraging divorce, you should leave that church, never go back. If you know of a pastor who is pushing for divorce, and he's saying, you know what? Jimmy Evans is right. Abuse is cause for divorce. Divorce that guy. Divorce her. Addiction, divorce. If you know a pastor who is teaching this false doctrine of abuse and addiction is justification, it's not in the Bible, it's unbiblical. If a pastor is advocating for divorce, you should leave that church. Paul is very clear. This is the advice. Do not divorce your spouse. Do not leave. Now, he goes on to say, if you do have an unbelieving spouse, and if they depart, okay, 1 Corinthians 7, 15, but if the unbeliever does depart, then let them depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. So, if somebody does, this is the abandonment. So, this is biblical, okay, abandonment is cause for divorce. But that's the other person leaving. That's not you leaving. So bottom line, this is unbiblical teaching. Jimmy Evans is making stuff up. He is compromising and he's coming in and he's sort of sanctifying, you know, the whole adultery situation over at Daystar. And here's the thing, when people see that, when rank and file Christians see leaders doing that, then they figure, well, <laughs> if the people on top can do it, so can I. And it just causes sin and sin and divorce and adultery and everything else just to spread like wildfire. And that's, that's how we got here, because people never stood up for what was right. They just let it happen, sweep it under the rug, turn a blind eye, don't talk about it. And that's how we got to the situation in the year 2024, almost 2025. But thanks for listening. And until next time, may the Lord be with you. Have a great day.